Hello everyone, have you had your vitamin D for today? Vitamin D is one of the most common vitamin deficiencies with lupus. Vitamin D is one of the most common vitamin deficiencies when you're diagnosed with lupus. In fact, it's been reported that most lupus patients have low vitamin D, but it doesn't stop there. In fact, some are seeing that at least 46% of the population in the United States have low vitamin D and most of them don't even know it. When I was first diagnosed with lupus, vitamin D was the first vitamin deficiency that we started to supplement. At the time of my diagnosis, my vitamin D was at eight nanograms per milliliter. And most of the experts are recommending anywhere from 20 to 50 nanograms per milliliter. I was at an eight. No wonder I was feeling so terrible. So before I started seeing the specialist, it was my primary care that would randomly sometimes run vitamin D blood work. And most of the time, my blood work would come back in the 20s. And my doctor would always assure me that I was within range and there was nothing to worry about. But as I became more sick, my vitamin D levels really began to plummet below the 20 and I hit the eights. The specialist at the time recommended 25,000 IUs every other day for six weeks. And once that was completed, I began to supplement myself with anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 IUs per day. Now, most of my vitamin D levels are coming back somewhere in the 50s. I would still like to push it a little bit higher into the 60s, but I feel better with it being in the 50s. And I did notice it helped a lot with fatigue and it helped with a lot of the other symptoms that I was having. I was having some dizziness and just not feeling well. But once I got my levels above the eight, I began to feel a whole lot better. Now with all of our vitamin D levels being so low with lupus, there's a couple of theories that the scientists and doctors are working on, which is does having low vitamin D actually cause lupus, which some of them feel that it does, or does having lupus or other type of autoimmune diseases plummet our vitamin D because of the disease activity? And that's also another line of thinking but they're still trying to come up with the exact answer. All right, so let's talk about the best way to take vitamin D so that you can get your levels up. Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, not water soluble. So if you can take it with a heavy meal that has fat in it, it will absorb a whole lot better. So if you're having problems with absorption, try taking your vitamin D with fat. All right, so when is the actual best time of day to take vitamin D? For me, it's been in the morning. If I take it too late in the day, and that's anytime after 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I don't sleep that night. In fact, it's been studied that vitamin D can interfere with our melatonin production and interrupt our sleep. So for me, I try to take it as early in the day as I can, but since I do intermittent fasting, what I've done is added MCT oil powder to my coffee to help with vitamin D absorption. Vitamin D3 is more bioavailable than vitamin D2. In fact, most of the supplements now contain vitamin D3. However, when I was on prescription strength vitamin D, I did notice that it was vitamin two, but my level still went up really well. Now that I'm supplementing on my own, I prefer vitamin D3. And I make sure it's combined with vitamin K2. And this is extremely important. Vitamin K2 makes sure that the calcium that's transported with vitamin D is actually deposited into your bones instead of depositing the calcium into your arteries. Now, because most of us supplement very heavily with vitamin D, I wanted to make sure and mention the K2. I currently do not take any type of vitamin D without supplementing at the same time with K2. Your doctor will talk to you about the type of dosage for vitamin D that you need. I am currently sharing my personal story and this isn't medical advice. Your doctor will advise you on the exact dose of vitamin D they think you should be taking, but you need to pay attention to your lab work because often the standards for vitamin D are much lower than what they really should be. And they're based off of really old studies. So that is how I'm currently supplementing with vitamin D. It's extremely important to my health regimen that I stay on top of vitamin D. 
And as always, I wish you luck on your health journey and I'll see you guys in the next video.